said, I was born with nothing to break the light of the sun. developed out of inherent features, bring things out to show. In this culture have political system and architecture surpassing anything achieved by Africans or Polynesians in a stone. So why I wanted to show you this, you know? Why did I want to show you this? Because we're talking about orientation. At first I had to get you to stop spinning. Now I need you to understand some history, some real history connected with the Bible and what, you know, how it all fits together. Okay, so in the Larkin Museum in Lima, Peru, lightning. You heard the lightning? Because we're breaking the spell, baby. It's like, wow. I'm going to continue with that. I hope you didn't get scared. So it says, in Lima, Peru, there is a photograph of the Inca noble man and his son's painting. The whole nation. And for there's even now among them a city called Masaka, which may inform those who are able to understand that so was the entire nation once called. So they're saying that they were called Meshach, 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 right? Meshach. We're gonna hear about the Mashika and the Moshe people. Meshach. And we're gonna learn about the Phoenician speaking Mashika. And the Aztec's ancient name is Mexica. We're going to learn all that. So it continues here. Meshek. Which means, at first I had to get you to stop spinning. History connected with the Bible. Now I need you to understand some history. Some real history connected with the Bible. And what, you know, how it all fits together. Okay, so... In the Larkin Museum in Lima, Peru, lightning. Moshe, Wikipedia. Moses or Moshe is a male given name after the biblical figure Moses. According to the Torah, the name Moses comes from the Hebrew verb meaning to pull out or draw out of water. So, to pull out or draw out. Where did we see that? Let's go back. Meshek, drawing out. Sky, maskali. Masha, maskusi. Masaka, masaka. Mach, mashketos, mochketos. Moderes, moshki. Moshki, Mosa, Moshe, Mosh, Moshis, Mososh, Moshi, Moshien, Moshakian, Moshok, Moshok, Moshoi, Mosochen, Mosochen, Mosins, Mosinoishi, Moska, Moscovi, Moscow, Moscovites, Latvians, 
Litu Lithuanians, Romanians, other related groups. So Masaka is the ancient name for the capital of Cappadocia. What does the word Meshach mean? In the Aramaic language that the Phoenicians generally spoke Meshika. Remember that word Meshika, they spoke Meshika. The real word for Meshach means Messiah. In Turkish a similar word means Mes Messi or Meshi of the Aztecs by historian Fray Diego Duran. In the year 1193, after the birth of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the Aztec nation reached this land. These people, like others who populated the country, departed from seven caves in a land called Aslan. The people were called Aztec, which means people of whiteness. They were also called Mesitin or Mexicans, in honor of the priest Lord who guided them. Mexic, right? Right? Mexicans. So it says, we at the Americas know them as the Mexica. Mexica? What did the Phoenicians speak? In the Arabic language that the Phoenicians generally spoke, Mexica. the priest and Lord who guided them, in honor of the priest Lord who guided them, whose name was Meshi, Meshi, okay, so what, check this out, in Phoenicians generally spoke Meshika, Moshe, Moises, Moses, Moshe, all right, so it says, guns, Meshi, in honor of the priest and Lord who guided, in honor of the priest Lord who guided them, whose name was Meshi, Meshi, okay, so what, check this out, in Phoenicians generally spoke Meshika, the real word for Meshek means Messiah, in Turkish a similar word means Messi or Meshi, Moshe, Moses or Moshe is a male given name after the biblical figure Moses, and what the week, this is Wikipedia, Meshika, the Nahual pronunciation, or Mexicas were indigenous peoples of the Valley of Mexico, known today as the rulers of the Aztec Empire. And so the Aztec had a story unmistakably like those of the Moses myth, or Moshe, right? Moses, Moshe, Moshe, Messiah. And were the Mexica? What did the Phoenicians speak? Mexica. They were the Aztecs. The Aztecs referred themselves as the Mexica or the Tenochtitlan, Tenochtitlan, or the Native American. Right. So why I wanted to show you this, you know, why did I want to show you this? Because we're talking about orientation. At first, I had to get you to stop spinning. Now I need you to understand some history, some real history connected with the Bible and what. You know how it all fits together. Okay, so in the Larky Museum in Lima, Peru, lightning. You heard two Estras 1340 tells that these are the ten tribes that were taken captives from their land in the days of King Hosea, whom King Shalmaneser of the Assyrians took across the river as captive. They were taken into another land, but they made this plan for themselves. They would leave the multitude of the nations and go into a more remote region where the human race had never lived. There they would be able to observe their customs, which they hadn't kept in their own region. 
they went in through the narrow passages of the Euphrates River. Then the Most High gave them signs and stopped the flow of the river until they had passed. And there's a lot of versions, obviously, I would say, in, in different English. Well, so look what it's telling us. And they took this book out. You know, so they went captive to another land, but they was like, you know what, let's just go over there. Let's separate ourselves. Right? Just like it says Eber and his family did when they didn't want to build the tower. Okay? Where did they go? Where the human race had never lived. Alright, so keep that in mind. So alright, so it says here about Right, red man, red, dark red man, copper. The name Indian was conferred upon them from the real or fancied ideas about geography were permeated with a peculiar religious mysticism. He kept a book of prophecies in which he collected quotations mostly from the Bible, often those dealing with isles uh, far off, or islands, right, or lands. He kept a book of prophecies in which he collected quotations mostly from the Bible, often those dealing with isles far off, lands, or islands. That seemed to prophecies by Christopher Columbus. You know, if you look for it on the internet, it's there. I'll try to put the link here. If you need it, just let me know. I got it. So, um, you know, this book, basically, he describes what his intention is, why he's going to the Americas, what, who's he doing it for, and, and you know, that he basically feels like he is uh, a prophet, like he's, he's, he's basically fulfilling a, a, a prophecy. The book amongst the earliest and most fascinating witnesses to the latter is a manuscript of 84 folios dated between September 13, 1501, and March 23, 1502, and now preserved in the Biblioteca Colombina in Sevilla. Okay, this is preserved in a prestige library in Spain. It begins, and this is in Christopher Columbus' own words. This is the beginning of the book or collection of author authorities, sayings, opinions, and prophecies concerning the need to recover the holy city and Mount Zion and the discovery and conversion of the islands of the Indies and all of peoples and nations for Ferdinand and Isabella are Spanish rulers. It says, this manuscript, commonly known as El Libro de las Profecias, or Book of Prophecies, was compiled by Christopher Columbus himself in collaboration with Gaspar Goricio, a Cartusian monk of Italian origin who belonged to the monastery of Santa Maria de las Cuevas in Seville. Okay, so again, what did it say? <laughs> that he is going to recover the holy city in Mount Zion and also for the discovery and conversion of the islands of the Indies and the peoples and nations. He know what's over there. What is he saying is in America? The Holy City. What's the Holy City? Jerusalem. We're going to see that in another video. And that's in Peru. Mount Zion. You know, Mount Zion. The navel of the world, the center of the world. Cusco is the center of the world. The name Cusco means navel of the world. Mount Zion is considered the navel of the world. Jerusalem is considered the navel of the world. Peru, Cusco means navel of the world. So that's just another video, but just you can see Christopher Columbus knew where he was going and who was over there. Okay, so I'm going to continue here. The transcription of the set, September 13, 1501 letter in which Columbus explained the project and asked for assistance. So this is where he's saying, right? Reverend and very devoted father, when I came here to Granada, where is Granada? Caribbean, right? Okay. I began Granada. Caribbean, right? Okay. Granada, where is Granada? Caribbean, right? Okay.
is Granada. Caribbean, right? Okay. I began to collect in a book of excerpts from authorities. Authoritative. <laughs> Sorry. I began to collect in It says here, in South America, the hypothesis connecting the American Indians to the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel was advanced mainly by Spanish missionaries and travelers while coming across impressive archaeological Indians to the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel was advanced mainly by Spanish missionaries and travelers while coming across impressive archaeological remains of the pre-Columbian civilizations or investigating the way of life of local tribes believed to recognize various customs and beliefs. 1729. All right, here we are at the Jewish Virtual Library, and this is uh, regarding Montesinos. Well, Antonio de Montesinos, right? So we're going to learn who he was and what he said about and were acquainted with other Jewish rituals. He brought this news to Amsterdam in 1644 and the congregational authorities, Manaseb and Israel, among them had him repeat his account under oath. So in a booklet entitled Esperanza de Israel, The Hope of Israel in Amsterdam 1650, which I'm about to show you right now. Deeply impressed public opinion and start of many polemics in English literature, you see? Says here, the Indians of the Yucatan and the Yakusanitenses do circumcise themselves. The Teutonians of New Spain and Mexican, any sudden misfortune or death of any. Gregorius Gracious in Monarchia in Gasonum and Isle of Peru says that the Guanacapus, hearing that his sonne Atahualpa fled for fear of the army of his enemy, he ran his garments. The Mexicans and Teutonians of the Totocanenses kept continually fire upon their altars as God commanded in Leviticus. In the Literary Digest, September 21st, 1912, are the Indians of Hebrew origin. William Penn gave the clue to many subsequent biblical scholars in the declaring that he had found in the American Indians the lost tribes of Israel. The superficial resemblance between the two peoples was so striking that he was led to say when I look at their children, I imagine myself in the Jewish quarter of London. The Reverend J. Wesley Anus says in Science Herald in Boston that as late as 1889, a well-informed representative of the Moshkoki, Moshkoki, Meshek, Meshik, Moshki, Moshkoki tribe, again, remember that word, first 1912, are the Indians of Hebrew origin. William Penn gave the clue to many subsequent biblical scholars in the declaring that he had found in the American Indians the lost tribes of Israel. 
The superficial resemblance between the two peoples was so striking that he was led to say, when I look at their children, I imagine myself in the Jewish quarter of London. The Reverend Jay argued that different Native American languages unfamiliar to European ears were slight variations on Hebrew. And when some white settlers discovered what they thought was a set of Tefal in an Indian town in Pittsfield, Massachusetts in the early 1800s, they used this incident to further support their claim. By linking America's earliest inhabitants with the Bible and its theology, these idealistic colonists suggested the America was indeed the new promised land. So here, the Mormon scripture in the lost tribes of Israel. When the Mormons first emerged in 1830s America, Constantine Samuel Raffinisque, a Christian polymath of French-German heritage, attacked them for their singular but absurd opinion that the American tribes are descended from the Hebrews or the Ten Lost Tribes. The land PDF here, the Jewish Advocate, February 27, 2015, says, Pitfield Jewish Life on the Western Frontier of Massachusetts. Perhaps the earliest reference In 1815, when it was reported that a boy clearing an employer's uh, Joseph Merrick's Fort Hill yard of rubbish dug up a set of Teflon. And so, in press coverage, a PDF here, the Jewish Advocate, February 27, 2015, uh, Joseph Merrick's Fort Hill yard of rubbish dug up a set of Teflon. And so, in press coverage about the fine caused quite a stir across the country, and clergy and scholars flocked to Pittsville to examine the parchment scrolls enclosed in their leather boxes. At the time, many people believed that the Native Americans were descendants from the Lost Tribes of Israel, and they were convinced that the Tefillin had been dropped by an ancient Israelite who perhaps had traveled across